from early election results to a cultural celebration at a local art museum. It's all here on Seattle News Now. Hello, I'm Brian Callanan. The Seattle City Council will soon be seeing some changes as election returns continue to come in. Early numbers show incumbent Lisa Herbold holding on to her seat in District 1, and Tammy Morales is ahead in the District 2 race. Egan Orion has an eight-point lead over Shama Sawant in D3, while Alex Peterson is leading in District 4. Incumbent Deborah Juarez is 15 points ahead in D5, Dan Strauss five and a half ahead in District 6, and Jim Pugil has less than 1% of a lead in District 7. At the county level, the renewal of the Medic One levy is passing by a wide margin. Voters want John Wilson to keep his assessor job, and Julie Wise will remain as Director of Elections. In King County District 2, Gurmai Zahilai looks like he'll unseat longtime council member Larry Gossett. District 4 is voting Jeannie Cole Wells back into office, Claudia Balducci will keep her District 6 job, and Joe McDermott will remain as the District 8 representative. At the state level, Voters are rejecting Referendum 88 to institute affirmative action for hiring and college admission decisions by a three and a half point margin. I-976, the Tim Iman measure promising $30 car tabs and a challenging future for transportation projects statewide is passing with a 10 point margin. These election numbers will change over the next few weeks. Counties will certify their results November 26th and the Secretary of State will certify final results on December 5th. In other voting news, the city's election commission has unanimously endorsed a plan to reduce the role political action committees will play in city races. The proposal from council member Lorena Gonzalez would block foreign influenced companies from contributing to PACs and would limit qualified donors to giving no more than $5,000 to a PAC. The $3 million in PAC spending on city races this fall is a new record. Gonzalez hopes to introduce this legislation in mid-November with a vote from the city's new council in early January. On Saturday, November 9th, check your vital signs. It's time for the Georgetown Art Attack. The event features visual and performance art and an art walk through the South Seattle neighborhood. Admission is free, and if you miss out in November, the Art Attack happens the second Saturday of every month. On November 16th, head to the Seattle Art Museum for a celebration of Diwali, the Festival of Lights. There's a special exhibition and some exciting live performances to honor the Hindu festivity. It runs from 11 to 2 and is free with an RSVP. Finally, Heather Haverleski, the acclaimed advice writer behind the Ask Polly series, will hold a talk about her new book, What If This Were Enough, at Town Hall. The event, Friday the 22nd at 7.30 p.m., is free to anyone 22 and under. To learn more about any of the stories you've seen here, log on to seattlechannel.org slash seattlenewsnow. I'm Brian Callanan, and I'll see you next time on Seattle News Now.